FM. Very good morning, Mr. Good morning. Thank, Thank you, you very much for being with us. Today. Thank you Thank for you. having me on your show. So, what is the primary motive of your visit to Calgary? Uh, it's a number of things. Uh, reconnect with the community, of course. Uh, we have uh, a number of events planned, uh, some related to my portfolio as Minister of Immigration, others uh, just connecting with uh, friends here as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You launched the Family Reunification Program. It was uh, a renewed program, but people yeah. are not very well satisfied with this new system because it opened and it ended. Yes. So what do you have to say on this? Uh you know i i want to first of all just remind you where we were mm-hmm. uh we inherited a system where people were waiting 7 to 8 years to bring their um, parents or grandparents and uh there was only 5000 spaces available available for people to sponsor their parents and grandparents mm-hmm. and in addition to that uh, what we inherited included a backlog of over 160000 people So what we've done is cleared that backlog, uh, majority of it, reduced the processing time from seven seven years to eight years to down to twenty one months, mm-hmm. uh, and increased the spaces available for people from five years, uh, sorry, from five thousand spaces, yes, to twenty thousand spaces. That's that. Uh, remember, we had promised to only double it to ten thousand, so we yes. did we doubled it again to twenty thousand. But the program is very popular. and that's why it filled up so fast. Mm-hmm. The system operated smoothly. There was no technical glitches. Uh we received we basically got the first 27,000 applications to account for any duplication. But uh you know, I'll be of course traveling across the country to make sure that we get feedback from Canadians on on how they feel about this new system. As you remember, we used to have a first come first serve uh, system where agents and other people would line up at uh, yes. immigration offices and people didn't like that system because yes. it meant that if you paid more money to agency you would be first mm-hmm. in line so uh, we introduced as a government the lottery system mm-hmm. the random selection process as a way to kind of even the playing field uh last year uh, we spoke to canadians across the country and people didn't like that as well mm-hmm. so they said we should go back to the first come first served system but online so that you cut out the agents and, and the middle mm-hmm. and the middle people and uh it gives everyone an equal chance now people are saying that even though we've increased it four times and we put we went back to the first come first serve uh, some people are not happy because they didn't get in uh, i would say to those people that uh, they should in the meantime uh, try the super visa to reunite with their parents for at mm-hmm. least a period of up to two years and then try again next year Yeah. So the Hindu Sikh families are coming from 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 Afghanistan directly and uh, it is with the help of uh, the federal government's program that they have been facilitated. And uh, what do you have to say on this? So how difficult was it because they are not uh, they were not as such the refugees living somewhere. It and the the Manmeet Singh Buller Foundation uh, helped it out. So what do you have to say on this? Well uh you know Canada has uh, as as a government the Trudeau government has been very uh, strong when it comes to standing up for human rights uh on the international stage making sure that we fight for the rights of religious minorities everywhere and that mm-hmm. includes looking at uh, ways to um, utilize our immigration system to to help the most vulnerable and uh through our private sponsorship system we've been able to work very closely with the Manmeet Bulla Foundation and folks from that organization to sponsor a number of families mm-hmm. uh, as you know Sikhs and Hindus in Afghanistan uh, a religious uh, minority that is very vulnerable and uh, the Manmeet Bulla Foundation uh, has uh, has been working very hard to uh, to afford protection in Canada by sponsoring a number of families uh, who uh, were originally from Afghanistan who then trans- transited through India uh, we've been working closely mm-hmm. with with the foundation um as a government we have been very very clear on the importance of the private uh, sponsorship of refugee program that's the program that that was used in this case 
And I, I'm very proud of the fact that to, to, together with the Man Meet Bulla Foundation, we will be able to provide protection to these very vulnerable individuals from, uh, from Afghanistan, both Hindus mm-hmm. and Sikhs uh, from Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. You just announced a five-year program for the for the caregivers. And, yes, uh, it was a new program and it has been welcomed widely for sure. Absolutely. But there are some questions that uh, move around the restrictive requirements. Mm-hmm. So uh, some people are demanding, maybe from the from the profession, yeah. that these requirements are uh, that where they can be. Uh, exploited. So, do you have any idea about those? Things? How so? The 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 restrictive arrangements that have yeah. been made that mandatory that mm-hmm. they have to do this. Mm-hmm. In that case, they can be exploited. Oh, well, uh, the live-in caregiver program mm-hmm. ended in 2014. There was a huge backlog there, and you know, caregivers. Let's let's remember, caregivers provide a very very important service. To Canadian families, to, uh, to to Canadian individuals who who really need the services of caregivers, and even though the, the caregivers were providing this really important service, mm-hmm. we weren't reuniting caregivers with their own families yes. fast enough. I remember meeting one caregiver uh, who had been trying to reunite with her family for seven years. Finally, was able to do that, but had to wait for seven years, and her story is not. Uh, is is unfortunately very common. Mm-hmm. So what we try to do as a government is to say, okay, with the live-in caregiver program, let's finish the backlog, and then introduce new programs to take into account all the things that are frustrating the caregivers, because they provide an invaluable service. So a lot of the changes came from engagement with the caregiver community. I have met with my, myself and my colleagues. I uh, have met uh, a number of caregiver communities through different town halls and engagements and roundtables to hear directly from them what we should do differently. But first, we had to fix all the consequences, the negative consequences from the old uh, living caregiver mm-hmm. program left behind by the conservatives. So under that program, again, it, it sounds like uh, you know I'm repeating the same thing, but it's a, it's the same as the parent grandparent program. We inherited a backlog there. Five to seven year wait times, thousands of people in backlog. We, you know, so I promised the caregiver community last year that at the end of 2018 we will eliminate 80 percent of the backlog yes. left behind from the living caregiver program. We actually did better. We mm-hmm. we eliminated and reduced the backlog by 94 percent. Oh wow! So mm-hmm. so really, you know, we we exceeded the promise. Mm-hmm. So the caregiver, the living caregivers who are in backlog are very happy with us because families no are being reunited. Yes. Number one. Now moving forward, how do you prevent this from happening again? Mm-hmm. Well, how about just allowing caregivers, if they qualify as caregivers, to come to Canada? Have them bring their family, have mm-hmm. they bring their spouse and their children? That way, there's no family separation, mm-hmm. and do the credentials and the qualifications check before they get to Canada. Mm-hmm. See, in the past. People would come and start working in in the caregiver field here, and then apply for PR, and then we would say to them, "Oh, you don't qualify." So people are stuck, right? So why not check all those requirements before they get here? Mm-hmm. The way we do that with other immigration streams, yeah. right? Especially in the economic category. So under the new the two new pilots, one is for um, caregivers for children, and the other one is caregivers for people with high medical needs, right? Mm-hmm. So in those two new programs. Essentially, what we'll do is we will assess the person's qualifications to be in the caregiver field before they get to Canada. Mm-hmm. Once they qualify and they have a job as a caregiver in Canada, they get to come here and they bring their family. Yeah, that will re- remove the issue of family separation once and for all. Okay, that's great. And then, in addition to that, the thing that they were really concerned about the caregiver community is to uh, preserve their access. To permanent residency, mm-hmm. so we said, okay, after you arrive in Canada, if you work in the caregiver field for two years, and you don't obviously do anything else that makes you inadmissible to Canada, like commit That's crimes right. and things like, mm-hmm. you know, as long as you do your job and you're in Canada for two years and work in the caregiver field, then you can apply for PR after mm-hmm. two years. 
So it, it just streamlines everything. There's no people who are caught in limbo. There's no family separation. There's no misleading everyone. Uh, and there were some people who came to Canada after the uh, live-in caregiver program was closed in 2014. That's and they started working in the caregiver field, hoping to get permanent residency because they, they weren't aware that it was closed. Mm -hmm. So for those people, we have an interim solution whereby we've opened a very interim window from March 4, 2019 to June 4, 2019 to ask them to apply for PR and, and hopefully we can also clear. It's not a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. It's a few cases and hopefully we can also remove those people from limbo. That's right. And, uh, because they are working in the caregiver Since field. Since this is an this is an unorganized uh, sector, actually. Some people work privately with some yeah. homes, with some people. That's why... Uh, well, I think this time, uh, with the, moving forward, we will have more uh, structure to the system because people will be assessed before they come to Canada. Yes. So we will know whether this person can actually is qualified to be a caregiver. That's correct. There'll be no more um, uh, doubt or ambiguity. Yes. So they come, and as long as they fulfill their side of the agreement, which is that they have to work as a caregiver, we don't want people to land here because there's some advocates saying, why don't we just give them PR once they land in Canada? Oh. The problem with that is then there's no guarantee that then they will, they will work, work for that. Yes. Or that they will work in the caregiver field. Yeah. So Canada needs caregivers. Canadians... Uh, value that service. We are saying to them, work in the caregiver field for two years. After that, <coughs> we will give you access to permanent residency. I think that's a fair that's and a reasonable uh, understanding. It's fair to, to the caregivers because it allows them to bring their families. It's also fair to the Canadians who are hiring their caregivers because at least they get, they get the service. What is your message for our listeners? Message for our listeners is that this is yet another example. If you look at the parent-grandparent issue, if you look at the uh, Sikhs in Afghanistan uh, coming through the our work, very collaborative, close engagement with Manmeet Bulla Foundation, if you look at the caregiver changes, this is a government that listens to Canadians. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you something? The caregiver changes came from the people. I listened to them in town halls. I said, what are the frustrations? They said, please get rid of the backlog. We want to reunite with our families. We did that. They said, make sure that uh, we have access to PR always. I said, sure, you will have access to PR. The other thing that uh, we've introduced is to make sure, again, that they bring their families. Mm -hmm. No more family separation moving forward. Why create that anxiety for these people? They're performing an, an, an invaluable service for us. And going back to the six in Afghanistan, the program they used, the privately sponsored refugee program. When we took office, Canada only had 4,500 spaces available to Canadians and permanent residents to sponsor refugees annually mm -hmm. for the whole country. Oh. So the government of Canada was making available less than 5,000 spaces to meet the, this huge gen, you know, demand for generosity from Canadians. Mm -hmm. The least we can do, since they're doing the sponsoring, yeah. is to at least increase the spaces. Uh -huh. So in our first year, we increased the spaces to 16,000 and then 18,000. This year is 19,000. It's because we, we want more Canadians to, to be able to use that uh, program. Uh -huh. And that's the program that the Manmeet Bula Foundation like did. But we worked very closely with them to also ensure that the applications were, were, were processed uh, because these are very highly vulnerable people. Mm -hmm. And we worked closely with the Manmeet Bula Foundation to make sure that we got everything right and, and we, we did what we could as yes. a government to help them because we understood that this was a very important initiative mm -hmm. uh, from a human rights perspective, from a religious freedom of perspective, from a vulnerability perspective. And I'm, it's coincidental. I, I honestly didn't know that... Uh, they were scheduled to arrive tomorrow, but I'm very excited that the first uh, family is, is, is arriving. Yeah, uh, hopefully so you are here in town because around 3, 3 p.m. they are supposed to be here, around 3 o'clock. Well, there will I'm always sure. be, I think, an opportunity <laughs> to meet them. Yeah, so, yeah sure. Thank yeah. you very much for joining us. You're, you're most welcome. Thank, Thank you, you for having Thank me you. again. Thank you. Appreciate it.